Welcome to a presentation of Creativity, a science-based outlook on life and work. In the course of history, we have been presented with new ideas that have made us change the way we perceive our reality. For thousands of years, it was common opinion that our Earth was the center of the universe and that the world we lived in was flat. People thought that if you traveled long enough in the same direction, you would eventually tumble over the edge. The three space dimensions and the time dimension that define our physical world were separate, independently working and extending far out in all directions. Mathematically, this world with its three space dimensions and the fourth time dimension would look like this. This world view was a true space plus time world. Then in the 16th century, Galileo Galilei proposed a rigorous discipline for researchers to follow in order to reach scientifically credible results when looking at our world. According to him, they had to explain how the natural phenomena worked without being influenced by the current philosophical or religious dogma. A scientist had to observe the phenomena, formulate an hypothesis, prove the hypothesis through empiric experiments and only thereafter declare his discovery. By studying the movement of planets and stars, Galileo discovered that the Earth was not the center of the universe and that it was only one of millions of planets spinning around millions of suns in an infinite universe. Although it took mankind a very long time to accept his theories, people started to realize that there could be more to reality than what could be observed with the five senses. In the 17th century, another extraordinary scientist, Isaac Newton, gave us a new and revolutionary scientific worldview when he explored and explained the effect of a fundamental natural force, gravity. He showed that this force affected all life on Earth and that it governed the Sun and the planets within our solar system. Newton proved his theories masterfully in his epic work Principia by defining the physical laws related to gravity and formulating them mathematically. In practical physical terms, Newton's discovery showed that the force of gravity affected two of the three space dimensions so that they became curved along the surface of the Earth. In this way they became finite. He assumed, however, that the third space dimension and the time dimension were unaffected and that they remained separate and infinite. Although this discovery dramatically changed our world view, Newton's world still remained a space plus time world. Then, about a hundred years ago, Einstein presented his theory of relativity, which comprehensively explained the reality of our physical world. Einstein could not use the strict scientific methods Galileo had proposed when deriving his theories. He could only hypothetically make most likely assumptions and thereafter, through mathematical reasoning, later confirmed by experimental evidence, show that his assumptions had to be correct. Thus he showed that we live in a four-dimensional world where the four dimensions were physically interdependent and integrated. They create a space-time world, which is finite in size, but without boundaries. We can tentatively illustrate this with the following figure. We live in a universe which curves back into itself, and that is finite in size and has no boundaries. What this means is that our reality encompasses all things, and that there cannot exist anything outside of it, well, because it has no boundaries. It also implies that time is just a subjective sensation of change and that fundamentally past, present and future is only an illusion. Space-time life is just a sequence of now events. Although the space-time world cannot be understood or described by us because of the limitations of our five senses and can only be explained mathematically and experimentally, this new fundamental discovery resulted in a giant leap forward in the development of science, technology and communications, changing our material world and our entire society in a fundamental way. 
With respect to human development, however, we still have not universally utilized the new conditions and possibilities offered by the same modern science. This is probably because we have difficulty comprehending the description of reality that Einstein derived at. It is near impossible to shake off our three-dimensional mindset. We basically still live, think, work and react as if we are living in the old space plus time world. In Creativity, a science-based outlook on life and work, we present the theory of creativity which is a human equivalent to nature's theory of relativity. It will potentially provide the foundation for a quantum leap forward in human resources development, comparable to what has happened on the materialistic plane. By using Einstein's creative methods for developing modern science, and through dimensional analogy, we explain the new concepts and conditions for human development in a simple and natural way. We lead the reader to an understanding that both our outer and corresponding inner realities can conceptually be divided into two domains. The first inner domain, which we refer to as knowing, is the domain that we perceive with our five senses, and from which we generate our normal life and actions. The other is the domain of being, which is our true inner reality. Up until now, we have not had the tools to utilize and access the inherent potential of true creativity that lies there within. In Creativity, a science-based outlook on life and work, we explain the nature of this domain and present, with the theory of creativity, a method to generate creative actions from its source. The outcome of generating these creative actions, which we present in a cost-benefit analysis, is not only extraordinary results, but also increased flow and aliveness in our lives. With the theory of creativity, we present a new, fundamental, comprehensive and universal possibility for human development. It transcends all cultural, ethnical, ethical, racial, philosophical and religious differences among people. The theory of creativity is presented and expressed in such a comprehensive way that a new subject, creativity, can be introduced as a basic learning program within all medium to higher levels of education and training on a global basis. Creativity should become a compulsory subject in all management, teacher and instructor education and training. The theory of creativity provides the foundation for a new creativity science which with further research and enhancement will serve and support all human resources development. We thank you for taking your time to listen to this presentation.